This is a video of a painting I started a few days ago on plein air. It started raining really heavily a couple of hours in, so I packed up and finished the painting off in the studio. I've just tried to make this video to show the whole process. I've not done this kind of thing before, videoing my paintings, so please excuse the dodgy camera work and the ripped glove. That's what happens when you try and attach your camera to a thorn bush. I'm using the sight size method here, which basically means I've locked my head into position and I'm using my paintbrush to gauge the heights of important points on the landscape, such as the bridge and the tops of the trees. That way, the shapes that I paint on the canvas should be exactly the same size as the shapes I see in the landscape from where I'm standing. As soon as I've got a really basic outline, I like to leave it and not do too much detail because I find it gets too fiddly and you start focusing on tiny little details. So once I've got a few basic lines put in, I'll move straight on to blocking in the sky and trying to get the right value of the sky. That's really important. And it looks quite bright in the video, but it was actually really stormy looking, especially towards the, the right hand side that's just out of shot, just over the bridge. It was a really sort of dark sky, so I've tried to key that in. That's the first thing I do after the outline. Once I'm happy with the value of the sky, I'll then block in the biggest shapes that are against the sky. In this case, it's the tree line. And I just want to make sure I get the contrast right between the two values. So constantly looking back at the sky and then just not focusing on any details in the trees, just the general sort of mass of trees, getting the right values. And in this case, I was using cerulean blue and yellow walker mainly for the trees with a little bit of ultramarine mixed in for the, the darker bits. And then I'm putting in the distant hills with some ultramarine and yellow walker. Just to try and be efficient and save space in my palette, I like to mix all the greens I can see in one go if I can. So now I'm just picking out any other little areas of green that I can see in the landscape, working my way from the distance to the foreground. And all these bits of grass are a much cooler green, so I'm using cerulean blue and cad yellow with just a bit of titanium white to bump up the value. As I'll usually paint the sky first, if I'm painting water, I will always try and get that in pretty soon after because obviously they're linked and if you've already put the sky in and then you wait too long to paint the water, the sky might have completely changed in real life and then your water that you're painting is gonna look very different to the sky that you've already got in your painting and they won't match. So I'm blocking in the water here with the color off my palette that I use for the sky. And as the color of water is generally just a duller version of, of the color of the sky, I've just I've just dulled down the, the color on my palette by mixing in some of the, the muddy colors off my palette to just take it slightly darker than the color of the sky.
I'm now cutting into the sort of the basic color of the water with this darker tone, which is just a little bit of ultramarine with mainly yellow ochre, I think, just to try and get the it's the dull reflections of the, the tree line really. And yeah, get that contrast with the, the color of the water. It's constantly changing and boats are going past and stuff and completely changing the, the surface of the water. So I'm not too bothered at this point, you know, to get it to get it absolutely right. I'm just trying to lock in some basic shapes. It started throwing it down at this point, which really affected how I could mix my paints. And yeah, my palette was full of water. The surface of the canvas was full of water droplets and it was really difficult to get anything to, to stick, to be honest. And for some reason, my ultramarine blue would not mix with any other colors when the water was present. So I had a really hard time mixing anything, to be honest and I was ready to pack up at this point, but I persevered for a bit longer. I always enjoy this part of putting the reflections in the water. I think it gives a, a real sense of the, the objects sitting on the water. And yeah, sort of general idea is if it's, you know, a white boat, then the, the reflection of the, the white is gonna be a fair bit darker, duller than, than the actual white of the, the boat. And you know, the blue will, the, the chroma of the blue is not gonna be anywhere near as, as strong. So just like a sort of dulled down version of it. You can kind of see what I was talking about here with the ultramarine blue not mixing. It just wouldn't mix with any of the other colors and it went really inky. It was just like, yeah, almost like blue ink. And as that's one of the, you know, my most important colors really, that's the darkest color on my palette. And I use it to get all my dark, all my dark tones really. So yeah, once I realized that wasn't working there wasn't much else i could do outside
the detail that I'm doing on this boat, I actually ended up scraping off as soon as I got back to the studio because it just didn't look right. It was a bit of a mess, to be honest. Mainly because my palette was just covered in water and I couldn't really mix anything properly. And I should have left at this point, but I got a bit carried away messing around with the detail on the boat. At this point, I knew I was about to pack up, so this is me basically just filling in as much as I can before I leave. And I do like to finish paintings completely outside if I can. Yeah, it's not always possible, and like I say, as I knew I was about to leave, I was just trying to get down the bits that I could in the time that I had. All the bolts on the left-hand side were going to take me a lot longer, so I decided to just ignore that and uh, just basically fill in the gap in the middle before I packed up. This is the painting back in the studio. It's still wet. It's just an hour, maybe two hours after I got back from the marina and I decided to work on it straight away. You might've been able to see I've scraped off the paint off the first ball and this is me reworking it. Still not 100% happy with it, but yeah, I decided to just leave it and not get too, too caught up in the, the modeling of the boat. <laughs> I'm basically working from, well, I didn't have a photo actually that I took. I was using the little bits that I could see from the video that I'd already taken of me painting it. So I was looking at, yeah, what I could see from that and uh, also just using my memory of, of what, I, what I saw while I was there to inform the rest of the painting.
I don't like to change too much once I'm back in the studio. I like to try and stay true to what I could see at the time. But in the video, or the still from the video that I was looking at, I could see there was a, a really nice uh, part in the sky with the sun shining through. So I decided to just enhance the sky a little bit, make it a bit more dramatic. So this is me just putting in the stronger contrast and this is just the titanium white and yellow ochre to get that nice warm glow and putting in little little details around the trees trying not to you know I don't, I don't want to start painting the, the trees again or anything if I can help it so I'm just being careful to not do too much and not take away anything from the stuff that I captured while I was outside because I think that's you know that's that's why I paint outside because it's got that spontaneity to it and it's what I saw at the time so I don't want to affect that too much I could spend forever working on these ripples in the water. I try to keep it loose, but then I also want to get that kind of effect, you know. I find it a difficult balance, but yeah, I just have to stop at some point and just leave it because I can really overwork a painting if I keep going with that. So this is me just trying to get in the the darks, the mid-tones, and then the highlights on the water. Just one thing I wanted to mention about the path, the, the tall path at the side, there's like a sort of muddy track in the middle of it. Usually as things get closer to you, you know, generally you're gonna to wanna to paint them darker. The value's gonna get get darker. But with something like that, because of the angle that you're looking at it from, so the closer the path is to you, you're sort of looking at the mud you know, with more of a bird's eye view, it actually gets darker as it goes away from you because you're looking at it from a sharper angle and then all the little muddy patches are sort of accumulating and you're looking at them sort of, you know, at a much sharper angle. They actually got darker as they got away from you as they sort of bend around the corner. 
on the left hand side there I've just added a sort of a lighter blue tone to those distant trees hills I just wanted to push them back a bit further so I uh, I mean it's pretty much pure ultramarine blue with titanium white with just a tiny tiny bit of yellow walker mixed in there but yeah I just wanted to enhance that and I think it gave it a bit more depth This is the last part of the painting. I'm just blocking in these bolts. I didn't treat him with any of the detail that I did for the ones that are actually on the canal. Uh, I just wanted them to sort of fade away into the distance. Interestingly, the color underneath the bolt, the underside of the bolt is actually pretty much exactly the same color as the, the water that I've used. So, you know, there's a lot of reflecting going on there on the on the side of the boat so yeah they're pretty much just the same color and then i've just used a slightly lighter version of that for the the top sides of the boats So yeah, that's the painting pretty much done. I hope this video was of use to someone out there. If you're, you know, interested in plein air painting or thinking of giving it a go, I hope this was helpful and, you know, showing you how you can 
finish stuff off in the studio as well. So thanks for watching. <laughs>